Chinese roadside vendors are putting glue on their oranges. This is horrible. A netizen in Chongqing posted a video of cleaning a watermelon, saying that the skin fell off as soon as he washed it. Apparently bananas are unbreakable in China. I wonder how they create this stuff. A Chinese man spent a large sum of money to buy fresh bananas online. And yeah, it was really fresh. Everyone must pay attention to distinguish fake eggs when buying to prevent being deceived. Counterfeit food has become a major problem in China's food system due to the country's lacking oversight, leaving consumers vulnerable to fake products. The existing safeguards are struggling to keep pace, allowing this issue to spread like a harmful infection. The problem stems from systemic flaws and regulatory failures, where the pursuit of profits takes precedence over ethical standards and accountability. This toxic trend not only poses a serious threat to public health but also erodes the trust that consumers have in the food they buy. The combination of greed and lax oversight creates a grim reality where counterfeit food thrives, negatively impacting both the well-being of the public and the integrity of the food industry in China. Forty years ago, Borax was confirmed as a carcinogen and banned as a food additive in China. However, it is now found in the pork we consume daily. Isn't it terrifying? Why do some pork products we buy today lack blood foam when blanched? Normally, fresh pork contains a significant amount of capillaries. After slaughtering and bleeding the pig, there is residual blood in the blood vessels. During blanching, the pork fibers contract, squeezing out the remaining blood. With borax, the pork looks vibrant, smooth, and fresh even when being stored for a long period of time. After applying borax, the pork and residual blood blend together, preventing the formation of blood foam during blanching. It's worth noting that borax is harmful to the human body. Once ingested, it not only cannot be excreted but also accumulates, potentially leading to poisoning over time. In a troubling revelation by the Supreme People's Procuratorate, the extent of negligence and misconduct surrounding food and drug safety within China's borders has come into focus. The report detailed by the official WeChat account of the Supreme People's Procuratorate on March 15 unveils a harrowing landscape of public interest litigation cases that highlight a deep-seated disregard for public safety and health standards. Throughout 2022 alone, the procuratorial organs took action on alarming 20,341 public interest litigation cases concerning food and drug safety. This marks a shocking uptick in efforts to combat an issue that seems to be spiraling out of control, underscored by the prosecution and supervision of a staggering 741.1 tons of counterfeit and inferior food, a 62% increase from previous years. A man in Hawaiian, Jiangsu Province, was stopped by a vendor driving a truck. He spent 400 yuan to buy four boxes of seafood. When he returned home, he found that they were all empty shells filled with water. In Beihai, Guangxi, unscrupulous merchants sold seafood by filling bags with water to gain weight, but law enforcement officers exposed the trick in public. Further exacerbating concerns, the watchdog supervised the recovery of 196.4 tons of fake and substandard food in circulation, which signifies a nearly eightfold increase year on year. This, coupled with the crackdown on the sale of 539 varieties of counterfeit and smuggled drugs amounting to 1.4 tons, points to a deeply entrenched problem of fraud and malpractice within the sectors responsible for the well-being of hundreds of millions. This is how fake pork meat is made. It looks like it is made from purely chemicals. The content isn't even including other meat types. What a horrible way of making food. Recently, the snack wax bottle candy has become very popular. I bought a bag out of curiosity. When I burned it on fire, it turned out to be the wax we use for candles. How can this kind of thing be sold to children? These figures, as staggering as they are, barely scraped the surface of the preceding year's oversight. In 2020 and 2021, the crackdown on civil public interest litigations in the food and medicine spheres saw more than 3,200 cases being filed. Astonishingly, more than 80% of these involved claims for punitive damages, highlighting the severity and rampant nature of the infractions. The near-perfect rate of courts siding with the prosecution's claims in 99.1% of effectively judged cases only further underscores the widespread negligence and, at times, outright criminal activities corroding these critical sectors. Among the highlighted incidents are several that cast a shadow on various sectors ranging from community group buying governance failures in Zhejiang province to malpractices in elderly care institutions in Jiangsu, not to mention the hazardous use of gold and silver foil powder in food preparation in Jiangxi. These examples not only demonstrate the diverse ways in which safety and health regulations are being flouted but also the brazenness of those involved in such deceit. Everyone must pay attention. Yesterday, there was a seller selling fake goose eggs at the Trade City Morning Market. They look just like the real ones. Let everyone take a look again, 
Don't be fooled and buy fake durians on the roadside. Chinese ice cream cannot be melted. I wonder why that is. On top of these disturbing food safety violations, medical aesthetics clinics in Shanxi province were found to cavalierly endanger lives with expired and improperly used medical substances. Additionally, the concoction of drinks laced with controlled psychotropic substances in Guangdong unveils a sinister sign of profit-driven illegal activities. Cases in Xinjiang and Ningxia involving the production of food from diseased animals and unsanctioned slaughter practices illustrate a blatant disregard for human life and health, while the operation of selling counterfeit medicines over the internet exposes a network of deceit preying on the vulnerable. Fake pig blood. Even the preparation process is extremely unhygienic. How can someone eat something like this? The irresponsible behavior of these operators, extending to the selling of counterfeit liquor in Chongqing, represents more than just economic malfeasance, it undermines the very fabric of trust that society places in its food and drug safety institutions. The People's Procuratorate's diligent uncovering and prosecution of these crimes reveal a systemic problem that requires immediate and resolute action beyond the courtroom. The pronounced increase in penalties in litigation cases serves as a grim reminder of the uphill battle facing those tasked with safeguarding the public's health and well-being in a landscape tainted by greed and corruption. The fake pig's blood available in the market is made from a combination of materials such as tofu, starch, and edible pigments, which these unscrupulous vendors refer to as synthetic pig's blood. Many dishonest businesses resort to blending these ingredients to create a product that closely resembles real pig's blood. The addition of tenderizing agents like tenderizing powder, enhances the texture, providing a smooth and tender sensation when consumed. To further mimic the authentic appearance, artificial red pigments are often incorporated into the mixture, ensuring a convincing color. Despite these efforts, it's crucial to note that this synthetic pig's blood does not have the natural characteristics and nutritional value of real pig's blood. Not to mention, many of these blood is produced in an extremely dirty environment, causing many diseases. Not to mention, the Supreme People's Procuratorate during a press conference on the third anniversary of the special supervision activities of public interest litigation to protect a better life. The pervasive deficiencies in China's efforts to safeguard food and drug safety become glaringly evident. Despite laudable initiatives, the sheer scale of enforcement challenges paints a grim picture of the state of consumer health and safety protections. Over the past three years, the prosecutorial apparatus has been embroiled in the mammoth task of addressing 19,765 cases related to the sale of unsafe agricultural products and foods in traditional and digital marketplaces. Furthermore, with 5,846 online food legality cases and the confiscation of a staggering 787,000 kilograms of counterfeit and substandard food, valued at an astronomical 9.588 billion yuan, the depth of the crisis is laid bare. Take a look at this video. First, they prepare a piece of chicken breast and put it in a food processor to turn it into chicken mince. Then, they take leftover beef bones from guests, put the chicken mince into the beef bone shell, and use a spatula to smooth it out. They reuse the beef bones repeatedly. In another video, we don't know what material is used to make the fake marrow. The fragrant beef bone marrow is also fake. Technology is really pervasive, making us unaware and defenseless. I just want to know how many times this bone has been not on. It's really disgusting to think about. I sincerely hope that relevant authorities take this seriously and catch these unscrupulous vendors. It's truly unforgivable. Some unscrupulous businesses often send me private messages threatening and insulting me, saying that I expose these things every day. They want me to take down these videos. I've posted many videos like this, but no one really pays attention. People just scroll past. However, I will keep posting, a hundred times, a thousand times, until everyone starts taking food safety seriously. Deputy Prosecutor Zhang Xuexia's comments underscore a disturbingly routine neglect for public health, as regulatory oversight struggles to keep pace with the scourge of false health food advertising, illegal sales tactics, and the covert spread of hazardous products. The disclosed efforts, while intended to reinforce confidence in the state's commitment to protecting the people's vegetable baskets, rice bags, and medicine boxes, in truth, uncovers a litany of systemic failures and regulatory loopholes that continue to jeopardize consumer well-being. Nowhere are these shortcomings more pronounced than in the arena of drug safety, a total of 2,365 cases of counterfeit drug production and sales were filed, indicating a rampant and widespread issue that strikes at the very heart of public health. Remarkably, actions taken in Shenzhen, 
where punitive damages were sought against individuals selling counterfeit medicines on platforms such as Taobao, reflect the necessity for draconian measures to combat an insidious threat. However, they also highlight the administrative inadequacies, from unclear supervisory roles to deficient detection capabilities and lax legal frameworks that have allowed such precarious situations to proliferate. Apparently, Chinese gummy bears are as hard as concrete. How can they sold this to their own children? Friends, have you noticed? The soy sauce we use for cooking is fake, the vinegar for dumplings is fake, even the alcohol we drink is fake, and the milk we consume is also fake. Duck blood, meatballs, crab sticks, and even lamb meat are all fake. In the hot weather, when we want to enjoy a refreshing drink, it turns out that it's also fake. Even the mooncakes we bought for the mid-autumn festival contain fake ingredients like fake eggs and artificial jam. Everything seems to be filled with additives. I just want to ask, what is truly real? Up to this point, is there anything left that we can actually eat? The lack of effort to combat the illegal addition of harmful substances like hormones and antibiotics to consumer products is deeply troubling. An initiative launched in February 2022 has uncovered over 600,000 compromised products and implicated 5,592 companies, exposing a serious lapse in quality control and casting doubt on the integrity of the country's regulatory mechanisms. While there have been some strides in addressing drinking water safety in Fujian province, with 8,145 cases filed and investigations conducted, the situation highlights the severe shortcomings in overseeing public utilities. The discovered problems, such as high bacterial counts and neglected secondary water supply systems, underscore a blatant disregard for safety standards. Rather than instilling confidence, the statement from the Supreme People's Procuratorate paints a grim picture of daunting challenges and pervasive risks. The ongoing struggle against regulatory failures and deep-seated corruption issues reflects a system grappling desperately with the negative consequences of its own inadequacies.